The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Chapman. Hello, I'm Basil Chapman here on the 11th Friday, 11th of uh, February, and we're looking at, uh, this is the early edition because it'll be replayed at 10 o'clock, uh, so we're at 8.06 a.m. Eastern Time, and where's the Dow? The Dow futures after an early smash to the downside yesterday, and then a rip-roaring rally right back to unchanged, maybe even just a little bit higher, and then another plunge to a lower low yesterday. I'll discuss that in a moment, but let's just go through the numbers. Dow futures are now down after being down over 160 points, down to the 34,853 level, are now 35,081. And what I'd say to subscribers to my opening call this morning is that I think that this was a, a very emotional phase yesterday. And why on earth would the Dow, why would you see such a big uh, turnaround when you've got the steel stocks, uh, SLX, this is the steel ETF, up in a new recovery high? Uh, there's just something wrong with this picture. So now I'm going to go through everything very carefully. I'll show you that the E-mini, that's the uh, continuous contract, is down just 6.25. It was down at the, uh, let's see, E-mini. Yes, so that was down at 44.54. It's now 50 points, almost 50 points higher at 44.90. I'm not getting sanguine. I'm not getting a Pollyannish or anything. But I think yes, this is the pattern that we've been looking at. So let me go through this, and I'll do this because it's Technical Friday. And I want to show you, I'm going to move this across here. This is the daily chart on the left. I'm expanding it, and I'm going to elongate it. And I'm going to add a couple of days to the side here. So it says um, space to the right. I'm going to go 20 spaces to the right instead of my usual eight. I always like to have that space. The space tells you how you can look forward. If you if you cut it off right here, yes, you absolutely do not know what's going to happen the next day. But in your mind, I'm very visual. So there are patterns that I look at. And the pattern that I've been talking about when I had my call, as someone called me to my show uh, about a week ago, and I said, the pattern I'm looking at, maybe it was a little more, was the lowercase h pattern. And what do I mean by that? I look at three basic patterns in the market, either straight up, straight down, cup formation or arch formation. You can get a combination of one and two or one and three. If it's one and three, that's red because if you take out that left side low in this H pattern, fed at either a peak, the first peak, peak A, or the second peak, B, peak B, and you roll over, if you take that out, you can go like here. We did A minus right there in the S&P when it went from 48.18.62 down to 45.82.24 and then fell and started a trend line to the downside. I called it a double trend line. I called it the Chapman Wave in side track repellent zone and look how the price got repelled for two days right there yesterday and the day before so that creates an arch formation i had said that i'm anticipating that we're going to form another arch that basically goes sideways in a rectangle formation and creates an h to an m pattern in other words the arch goes to a lowercase h, and then you get a lowercase, another arch that turns into a lowercase m. And that's where, at the end of February, beginning of March, that's the big test. Do we slump and break right down through 4222.82? Or have we usurped so much downside energy, as well as upside energy, that you can basically restart something absolutely fresh, in March. Uh, it doesn't have to be March. It could be February. It doesn't have to be February. It could be April. I, I, I have no idea at this particular point, other than the measurements I like to use, using a number of bars, uh, the left side and the right side, etc. Most importantly, today needs to see some upside activity. So let me cover that very quickly and say that if 
by, I'd say to subscribers, if by day's end, the Dow, let's just go back to the Dow, go to the uh, to the actual Dow contract. If the Dow is, and I'm going to get rid of the 20 bars to the right so we can be closer, I'll go to my usual eight. That's the daily chart on the left. They all have eight, in fact. They are. If, in fact, somehow, some way, that excessive move to the downside into the close yesterday, we give back to the upside. You know, I've always talked about the give back when we have a last hour spike to the upside. And my, my rule of thumb for year, decades has been invariably the next day, you should see at least a 20 to 30 percent of that last gain given back and then the market starts fresh. So it's the exact opposite. Now I'm looking at this saying perhaps we're going to see uh, something on the uh, something that says, wait a minute. Uh, whoops, let me just get out of that. Uh, close that. Sorry. And that's going to say, um, yes, there is a chance that we worm our way to the peak D, which is up there at the 35,824.28 uh, high that was made two days ago. Or we go sideways, but we don't actually break down today. In fact, there's a surprise to the upside. And let me show you what I'm looking at. The QQQ, NDX 100, a lousy chart. This is the trend line. It got, it got turned down. And now it's down just 28 cents after being much lower earlier on at 358.15. I think that there could be some kind of sideways move, maybe towards the upside. Look at the IWM. This is the one we're keeping our eye on. Because yesterday, intraday, it was superb. I'm not talking about the weekly, daily chart, monthly chart, or, or, or uh, anything other than the fact that yesterday's action, intraday, which was leading the pack. And we want to see, in this rotational correction, do we suddenly uh, see a movement towards the small caps as a kind of a savior that says, wow, <laughs> some of the other things are just too, too tricky, but these have been hammered so badly to the downside, they should have at least some kind of a rally. We'll see. All right, here we go. Gold. Gold is down just four points at 1833. Had, I, I just think that this is in a big trading band. It hasn't broken to the upside yet. It's actually pretty. Look at those green candles. In fact, for the last about nine sessions, let's go to the bottom here of the 24th. About 11, maybe 12 sessions. We've only had one red candle. So it's done very nicely. And it's telling us that keep an eye on gold because if it starts to trade in the 1853 or higher area, all of a sudden it's broken the rectangle formation, long term inner rectangle, and it's trying to head towards the high that was made three weeks ago at 1856. The next level after that is. 1884. I'm not ruling it out. I'm just saying, at this point, I still think that gold is not quite the leader, but it has a chance to do that if it comes out of this um, pullback from yesterday and starts to move higher into Sunday night, Monday morning. That'll be very important. Just quickly, silver. There we go. Silver is trading down 45 at 23.07. This is the one that says mm, it's going to be a drag on the gold. Let's go to the dollar. The dollar is down the lows. The most recent, oh, actually came back quite nicely. It's 95.77. It is at the low of the rectangle, the long inner, I call this the inner rectangle. Um, hold it quite nice at 95.77. If by the end of the day it's down below 9, or for Sunday night it breaks under 95.40, that's going to help gold. But if it holds here, that's quite good. Crude oil, crude oil right now is 95.77. And none of the surprise that I'm going to about TLT bonds. I'll be back in a moment. There's a tap. Early edition every morning. The so blue played at 10 for What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. 
For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi, folks. So the E-Mini uh, made a low this morning of, uh, let me just get that, the low is 44.54.50. We're 40 points above that. We've gone from this little low that was made at about just, uh, just as I was about to start the show, um, at 8.03, it went to 44.84, round number low. And now it's trading at 44.95 in the leg D in the one-minute chart. It made a peak D from the low that was made early this morning at about 1 o'clock a.m. Eastern time. And now it's trying to hit, if it can get to at 44.96, if it can even trade just for two, two, three minutes in the 4,500 area, then the 4,505, 200 period exponential moving average in the S&P mini uh, is going to be really important because if it can treat that, and when the market, we've got news coming out at 8.30, I'm sure there's some kind of jobs report or some kind of report. So if we don't get smacked down, but in fact hold quite steady, uh, the, the selling and the volatility index, the VIX index, I'm going to talk about it in a moment, was really high uh, for just a one-day turnaround. And we'll see what happens here. But if it's able to turn the 45 05 area into support and actually close up today, it doesn't have to be much, just a kind of a positive day that says I've stalled the downside move, then I think we've got the, I had predicted in my own work, and remember prediction is just that, it means you have no knowledge, you're just using all the technical aspects that you have to be able to conjure up some kind of a picture, and the picture that you want in this particular case was that S&P and the Dow, but I'm using the S&P because that's what I'd already discussed, um, as a kind of a benchmark to say, I don't want to make this too messy over here, but I'll use it for the Dow. I'll say that between here and here in the next week, this is kind of the trading range that, yeah, we come down, but we start to make the second part of this arch formation uh, so that it becomes like an M. I, I, we don't know. I'm just saying that this is the best thing that I can do, say that the selling yesterday was... And first of all, that huge slide to the downside in the morning, the waterfall cascade right at the open, 
And then that buying, that, to me, that was such a, what a pity, uh, because it was just way premature. Let me just show you this 10-minute chart, and you can get a picture of what I'm looking at. So look what happens. You get this right there, 810 starts to come down, and wham, 830 spikes to the downside, gets to the doji low, and then you get the buy the dips mentality, and they keep it moving up, and it almost goes back to the high. And then what happens is starts the 200. Look how important the 200 period moving average is. Look how beautifully it was holding above that, and then it goes under it and over it. And remember, I, I think of a spit with uh, the, the, whatever meat you got there, the top part. Uh, goes, gets burnt, then the bottom gets overburnt, and, and and it just spins around as if it's on this um, midpoint trajectory like a, a propeller shaft, and then it breaks down below the low. And then it just slumps all the way down, starts to flatten out, and now what we've got is this potential, I'll just say potential, for some kind of amelioration of that, that first move down, if it had held and gone lower, and then by the end of the day, by 3.10 in the afternoon during Tom, Tom O'Brien's show, uh, it was working well. And then it suddenly started to rally. This is what we'd be seeing, um, a move maybe maybe a little higher. Maybe instead of being 44.96 right now, maybe it would be 5.10 and a little bit more vulnerable. But we got a tremendous amount of the selling out of the way early on. Um, and then you got, you got that rally. And all those folks that got along thinking, uh-oh, this is it. This is the big move up. When it came down again, that hurt. That really hurt. And then overnight, it stayed down. So this is kind of a relief rally. But I'm putting it together with uh, a number of other things. And I'm just saying, I think that there's a lot of support to the downside. At the same time, I must make it clear, I think the upside is fairly limited. I'm, I, I don't think in this move... This phase, we go back to new highs at all. We have to do more testing, um, but we're prepared that we could go higher. And uh, no news until 10 with the Michigan sentiment. Well, sentiment is history, so we'll see what happens there. All right, so let me, let's just get back on with the show. Uh, here we go. Remember, this is at 8.23. We haven't even covered the next seven minutes when there's some kind of a report coming out. I'm just telling you what I'm expecting. So now I want you to go to this, which is really important. Look, TLT. What an ugly move to the downside. Eiffel Tower straight up, straight down, going to the high of December in the weekly chart, December the 3rd that week, 155.12. And here we are, 20 points. I mean, 136.25. That is, that is terrible. We're up 99 cents. So what I'm saying is, what if in this whole, now everyone's watching, watching, watching what the Fed's going to do, watching inflation, watching, watching yields, what if in this interim we get a rally back towards the one th we're at 136? So three points is nothing. It just gets us back to where we were yesterday or, or, or Wednesday. Um, but what if we rally towards 140 and it takes a little while to a quick takeoff and then it takes a little while, but it's moving higher. So rates are starting to come down. Well, what if it does that at the same time as crude oil? actually starts to pull back, doesn't pull back much, but it just the trajectory of moving higher says that the Chapman Wave inside track repellent zone is working its magic and pushing, pushing, pushing uh, back every time it gets there. Although now if it breaks out, it's going to go quite a bit higher. It can go to the 94s and it's at 91.24. But what if it starts to trade under the 14 period moving average for the first time since it broke down back in the last time it was there is 20. Uh, the 20th of December. So it just deserves it just for a rest period, if nothing else. Right. The weekly chart is still strong. The, if I want to go to the um, USO, USO peak D as well in the daily, uh, this, is a, this could be an alternate count D in the weekly chart, but most of them have gone to a C, but let's call it a D, a D in the daily, D in the weekly, United States oil fund, trading 64, 57, or 51. I'm just trying to give alternates. I do not like, uh, th 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 this, is, this is what um, I'm projecting as possibilities, 
I think looking out on the on the weekly and monthly chart of uh, of the crude oil, it's still holding extremely well. But if you put this together with the XLE Energy a sector, look at this peak E on the day, seventy point forty three on the daily. I've got this. I, they could make an alternate count. This is one of those things in the Chapman methodology. Well, if you start doing this on a, on any software program. You're going to come up with the strangest things. You don't want to mess with that. I do it as a visual thing. And what I've done over the years is whenever I get a peak B, and then it looks like that it couldn't make a C, but that C would be really important if it was there, because the candle that we're looking at in the longer term period says that that C, the real C in the weekly chart, could be a D, and D is where we get a little bit cautious in the Chaffee methodology. That could be really important. Um, so all I'm saying is that energy still looks very good. All right, here we go. Oh, I meant to do something else. I needed to do this. I wanted to see what this are. Oh, wow, time flies. After this, we should have some news coming out, economic news. So we'll deal with that. In the meantime, I had a really nice, almost a letter uh, written to me yesterday from one of my subscribers, just covering a bunch of points in a nice, succinct way that I probably should have done. I've done it in sporadic moments, but I'll do it when we get back. Uh, thank you, Mark. We'll get to that in a moment. I'll be back in a moment. Uh, this is the early edition. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den trading room, trading software, and educational webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Hi, folks. Early edition. It is 8.30. Let's see how the, the futures are doing. Let's go to the one-minute chart and see if any news is coming out to shake them up. Down or up or down or down or down or side to side to side. What is it doing? What is it doing? Nothing. Nothing. Down just 75 cents. Down a dollar. Down a dollar 25. Down a dollar 50. Down a dollar 75. Down a dollar 50. Down two. Down a 70. Going once, going twice, going down. Yep. 
it's holding quite steady, actually. Just at the moment, the day is young. <laughs> In fact, the market hours haven't really started until 9.30. Um, all right. So uh, we'll be back to this in a moment, and I'm going to just uh, do a couple of things. So uh, I'll read this letter in a moment because I want to go through everything that's there. I want to talk about Snap. I said uh, 52, uh, 52 days, but no, I, I, it's so long ago since I had the climactic um, volume price spike to a low that then reverses up. It's the same pattern. Someone might remind me, one of my subscribers, we had this about a year or so ago. And I said, this stock should now move higher for the next, it's 28 days, my rule of thumb, because it's just so long ago. And then if it holds and doesn't break the low, then it can continue for uh, 50, uh, 50, 50, about 52 weeks, 52 sessions or whatever we're looking at. That's not reset days. So let me just go, we'll go to that in a moment. Just first of all, FLC, which uh, CLF, which is Cleveland Cliffs Inc., flat roll steel, number of people have asked me. And John Malaya said, did not realize there was earnings. I bought it the other day at 18.30s and it had a really nice move. I was expecting a peak D. Um, so let me just talk about this because it's technical Friday. <clears throat> when you're following a price movement, that has made a, a serious high. In this case, the high was at 26.51 way back in October or November, and it uh, pulled back very sharply. It was a rectangle formation that took out the bottom, and I, I typed in, must hold this area, and I drew in the rectangle. It just once went under it, now it's back in there. So when, <coughs> excuse me, when you've got a rally coming off a, a serious low, it doesn't, the rule of thumb doesn't say it has to go to a, a, um, a PD. It says follow the technicals. If you get a bottom that turns up with price movement and the stochastic preferably has been under 20% and then starts to move over 20% and the price goes from a peak A, then maybe goes to a B. It could even be A, but if it starts to strengthen and that sees that the stochastic now is, is ra running sharply, when the MACD eventually crosses positive, that gives you the initiation of a buy mode. That buy mode says, yes, you should go to a peak D. But to go with that, you need to see the stochastic over 80%. Well, it's at 81%. It went to peak C, a leg C, over the 200 period moving average. It's pulling back. It was much deeper. It was a, a down a dollar fifty or something. Earlier, now it's down, a, down 92 cents. So the question is, what do I do now? Uh, it's down two dollars from where it had the high yesterday. The high yesterday was twenty one fifty three. Cleveland Cliff CLF is the symbol. Flat roll steel, iron ore pellets, just right in the sweet spot. One of the reasons why I say to subscribers, let's try another long position, because in, the, in one of the indexes, because there could be a near term rally that says the low that we just made could hold us a little longer because all I'm expecting is there's a cap on the upside, but there are enough stocks that are holding well and there was enough fear yesterday in that second rally, a second decline that went to a lower low. That was so important um, psychologically that I think we're a little oversold. We can have at least a little bit of a bounce. We'll see what happens. I'd say to subscribers, if the Dow is less than a minus 77, going into this afternoon, uh, that'll be a good sign to say maybe it can close positively and that'll be a good sign, at least very near to Now, so what I am saying is I would, I like Cleveland Cliffs, it's in the area, look, uh, US Steel, fabulous leg C extension, um, that is in a buy mode as well because the stochastic is at 84%, everything there is good, it's way above the 14 period moving average. <coughs> it needs within the next couple of days, not you're still down 42 cents at 23.81. It needs to hold the 22.73 200 period moving average and then move higher. And I think that's what we're looking at here. Roll steel. Well, we've got a rolling correction going on, and that's allowing some parts of the market to hold way better. I mean, look at Alcoa. Give me a break. Alcoa all time high. Good. I'm not, yeah, is that an all time high? Well, it's a, it's a, a recent high. In this environment, when you've got truckers that um, have almost closed a couple of bridges from Canada to US. So you've got a whole bunch of raw materials that aren't coming down or going and a whole bunch of things are going on. So all I can say is 
because of the, the cyclical area is holding so well, I think the emotional area that we saw yesterday, that was that was a killer for some people. I bet the number of shorts coming in yesterday is just huge. And if the market moves up today, they're going to have to cover. That's really what I'm saying. So I like it. I would do this. Look. You start your position, you've got, a, you've got a fairly reasonable profit in the short term. If you want, why don't you take something off right now and the stop that you had should be a break-even stop and just give it a little bit of room for the day. And if you start to see it going into the, it's a 20 right now, Cleveland Clips go to 19.55, then that, that's as good. I'm pleased I took a little bit off. I still want to give it a little bit of room. I just would give it a little room in this environment because what's working is where fund managers, their eye is going to go right there, and that's what they're going to be working on. So that's what I'm saying. Okay. Now, hi, Basil. How soon do you think the market can, can recover from today's action? Well, I've just covered that right now. I said I think a part of that, it was 500 points down, so part of it can be covered today by at least a rebound. But that's all I'm expecting. And then the market has to tell us what's next. I'm not going to be the market. I'm just saying we made a peak C. We went underneath that V-shaped pattern support. He held beautifully on the close, the 9 and 14 period moving average, which is green. The 9's above. 86% in the stochastic. MACD good. I like what I see on the short term. I'm trying to avoid all the news. Could be totally wrong if today we close underneath the low yesterday was 35,100. I'd said that 35,000 to 34,900 here is absolutely imperative to hold. Just keep it as simple as that. Okay. Um, so that's all right. That, so that's what I'm looking at. I noticed that Tro, we've spoken about this. I said to subscribers, this is keep this on our focus and see how it participates and how in the market it made a double top 224.04 high. Tiro Price actively managed funds programs. Well, this is important. This is a bear market. Um, 224.04, it plummets down to 180s, goes right back in the V shaped pattern I've been talking about for months. It's just amazing how indexes and certain uh, stocks have gone back to within pennies. 223.26 is less than a dollar away from the previous high. Then it does a plunge. And it goes all the way to the low that was made on the 24th of 143.64. That is bearish action. That is not good. But that's actively managed funds. T. Rowe Price. I'm keeping my eye on it. I'm not ignoring it. I think it's really important. I've got Fibonacci numbers. It held uh, 6.18 6 on the way down to the 148s. Um, wow, the next level will be um, 134. I want to see what happens here, but it looks to me like it needs a lot more time to break to the upside. I'll be back in a moment. Basil Chap, early edition. This is 8.38. It'll be replayed at 10 o'clock, my usual time. So that'll be 10.38. Let's see where the market is right now. The Dow has finally just gone positive in the future. Are you having fun trading the markets but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value 
or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Hi, folks. So this is now in the morning, 8.42 uh, a.m. Eastern Time, and we're looking at the Dow futures just spiked up. Now they're up 38. They were down 165 earlier on. They're up 40. This is nice action. One of the reasons why I see subscribers to Open Eagle, we've got to try a long position. We'll keep it a very tight stop. Uh, yesterday, we missed that one in the first iteration, and I was out to the office. Unfortunately, I actually was watching it on my cell phone, as it started uh, to move down, I was I, I thought, oh, I wish I was there. I would have sent a, 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 an update to say, um, don't buy on the next pullback, because I knew that if there's another pullback, really, but we got in, we, we lost less than a percentage, and we're now back in. And uh, hopefully we're making that up, but that's not the point. The point is that there's just enough reflex action from yesterday to say, Let's see how we resolve it. Maybe everything happens early in the morning, and then by this afternoon, we start to see another cell program come in. All right, so we go back. IAI, Martin says, that's the, um, we are long from the 45s back in 2020 on the 24th of March, and we are attempting, we've got another long position, IAI, not AII. Um, we're attempting with another, we've got another position in the brokerage area that's long. So it's at 111.81, and, and the question is, it went to a peak C. The OB, OBV seemed high yesterday. Yep, it was, but it did pull back a little bit. But look how strong this has been. Um, it's actually up uh, at the resistance level. I meant to do this, and I thought, eh, I'll do it later, and I forgot to do it. Oh, wrong color. Green. And then I always add the red line. Look at this, Chapman Way Falling X. Breakout formation, and it's been repelled from that because it's the repellent zone. As soon as it goes above, it becomes a propellant zone. Let's see what happens. Just all I'm saying is, based on um, everything that we look at, uh, as if I look at Ori, I looked at it actually funnily enough last night. I like to just punch letters in of stocks that I just remember offhand, and that was one of them, so I'll be there in a moment. This is a peak C. There should be an attempt to, like the Dow, there should be at least an attempt to get to a higher high, but this is a different pattern to the Dow. This is holding, look at that monthly chart. Oh, I, I, I will get to the monthly charts in a moment. I don't want to run out of time, so let me just get right to this. So, IAI, iShares broker deal in ETF, the monthly chart, um, so far is looking really good. It looks like it wants to try for a leg a D above 116.25. I don't want to get in front of anything. I'm just saying, why are the brokerage, uh, why are the brokerage stocks holding so well? Why is IAA up there near all-time highs, uh, just two point, uh, five points away from an all-time high? This is, I mean, something's 
not right. There's a bifurcated, actually I call it a trifurcated market at this time. You're in the wrong stocks, whew, it looks horrible. In the right stocks, you say, why is everybody fussing? But if you're in a mix, some of your portfolio will be acting weakly and some of it will be acting uh, much, much better. So what you want to see is 114.50 by about Tuesday of next week, not 109.50 uh, in the IA. Um, back in January, it failed at peak C. Yes, that was a peak C minus, uh, and that was quite upsetting, actually. But its all-time high was at a peak G on the 2nd of uh, November at 116.25. So underneath that, you can fail at a peak C in the Chapman Way methodology. It doesn't mean there's a guarantee that you're going to go to a D. But once you break to a new high, most of the time, I mean 95% of the time or higher, you will get to at least a D for higher peaks. Um, so uh, back in January failed. I hope we can make a peak D before going lower. I too, but hope is not the way we play the game. We want to play the game with technical analysis that's got veracity. I'm still thinking about that long QQQ monthly red candle. So now let's go to that. This is pertinent. This is pertinent to what a number of people have asked me over the last week. So I don't like the action of the QQQs up to date. It has broken, but it hasn't held above the 200 period moving average of 363. It's trading right now at 358. It's up 54 cents. Uh, after yesterday's move down, which was actually not too bad when you're looking at this. Kind of, this is a, what I call a cluster formation. It's either like a spring, powers up to the upside, or it's like a, an arch formation that says, what are you thinking of upside? I'm rolling over. So what happens by price is really important. And then the MACD is good. Stochastic is only at 66%, 65%. On balance, the volume is very weak. The nine is still under the 14. This has got a lot of work to do. And the daily, weekly charts are saying sell mode in place. And the monthly chart says we might have a sell signal by the end of the month. And in a way, I say this is not a Chapman Wave Roman candle because the, the body is just way too low. If, the, if, the, if it had... The whole body was from 368 up. I would say, oh, my goodness, we've already been halfway into the wick. That's a big deal. I'm still saying I don't like this candle because it's gone below for the 14 period moving out for the first time since April of 2020 when it broke out above. So this is something to keep in mind. It's really important. And all I'm saying is that, yes, Martin, I'm watching the QQQ because it's a tell. And that's the reason why I say we're in a trading band with a really good chance that at some point we're going to do the big test to the downside and how the 24th of January lows holds is going to be really important. All right. With a 10 year above 2%, and the two year also going up. So this is what I was saying. Let's see where we are. TNX dot X. Uh, yeah. So this is either F slash G right here. Or that's just the name of that's the Chapman wave just going on in a sequential way alphabetically from the low that was made back uh, here. Peak A. Then it starts again. Peak A. Whoa, 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 whoa. Did I forget something? You've got to count every peak. This is A. This is B. Ay, ay, ay. I, I did an incorrect count. Thank you for pointing it out. No, no, no. Not bad. Okay, there we go. There you are. That's a Chapman Wave potential. There you are. And now the first thing I need to do is make this smaller right here. And you've got a Chapman Wave instant restart right there. And that says you've got alternate counts going all the way up. And that says you've got, let me get rid of these things real quickly. Oops, I want to do this quickly because there's a lot I want to still do before we wrap up the show. And only I'll be back on Monday. So I want to do this now. Uh, so for, for my subscribers, uh, yes, I will be doing. So this is E, that's F. And then this becomes G slash C. And it says, aha, you do have an alternate count, and that's a D. That's what I wanted to see. So here's your D right there. There was Chapman Wave stalk leg formation right here. I can put that back. And it says the stalk leg can be a one-to-one -to, -one to the upside. It can also be just a brief neck, and then it comes back into the body, Chapman Wave stalk leg formation. And in the weekly chart, we've got 
at least for now, I'm calling this a leg F. I got a feeling this is going to be an alternate count F slash B. But it says, you know what? What if yields start to pull back here? Crude oil maybe pulls back. And all of a sudden, oh, and I want you to do some of the commodities. Uh, Martin, I'm doing this right in the middle of your, 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 your letter that you sent. Look, wheat. P, uh, P, C, and now it's pulled back to the 200 period moving. It's just stuck in the sideways action. Commodities are really important. Yes, this is uh, soybeans. Soybeans did exactly what we were looking for in the weekly chart with the cup formation. It got to the left side high a little bit sooner than I anticipated, and it is a potential PT. So that could be pulling back here before it has the big move to break out to the 1664s. And corn, corn has made a key. So we might have some amelioration of that. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter, a must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Are you having fun trading the markets, but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to Bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. I was just to finish up with uh, Martin's letter to me last night. So um, I'm going to show you one minute chart has gone to, in eight minutes, it's gone to peak D. This is that leg E right where on the 200 period moving average. How important is the 200 period moving average? You saw it all, that whole cluster that happened yesterday between 9 a.m., 8.30 actually, and uh, 11 o'clock. And then look how important it was when it went away. You don't even care about it. Now you're right back. So you want to see either a push. If you're short, you want to see a push down below 44.82 and holding. 
4480. And you want to see a push on the upside if you're long at my, when my show comes on. So between 10 and 11, you want to see a push if you're long between the 4522 and 4527. Maybe we just store you hugging the 200. So back to Martin. So um, he talks about the VIX. Let me just quickly say that the VIX index used the 200 period moving average, which has been a magnet for, for weeks. Look how many times it's touched that line. Um, and that's at 20.64. 20 it's trading at 23.64 right now, down 24 cents. This afternoon, if you're a bull, you want to see the general market uh, holding positive, uh, and you preferably almost all the indexes moving up. Doesn't matter the percentage, but moving up. And you want to see the VIX under 23.20, preferably under 23. If you're a bear, you want to see some kind of news thing, maybe the 10 o'clock news flash, and pow, the VIX jumps to the 25.45 area to a new recovery high, and you want to see this, the market going back to triple digit down the Dow. So that's covered that. At this particular point, I think the bias is for the VIX to kind of be pulling back. And then quickly, Snap. So Snap acting well early this morning, up 58 cents to 41.20. You said the, two, the, the only two stocks that ended green for me today were Snap and Blink. So it's acting well. All I can say is that the rule of thumb is that within with this kind of Chapman Wave volume price climax reversal on the on the third uh, of, of Feb. You, this must not close underneath uh, twenty thirty two seventy three in the next week. And if it does that and it's holding towards the forty four forty five, you can hold that. This this could act very well. And the only other thing is blink is a little different chart pattern. It's a very multiple if it move up okay, to twenty six. Have a wonderful day. Stay tuned for, uh, oh, yeah, Tommy O'Brien. Wonderful show coming up. Building wealth trading in the stock market seems impossible to most people. They think it's too volatile and risky. Most people aren't going to take the time to educate themselves on how to do it right. But you're not most people, are you? At TFNN, you'll get the guidance you need to refine your strategies and techniques to invest like a pro. Because you'll be a pro. All TFNN subscriptions, books, software, and courses are available at TFNN.com. And I'm even going to tell you how to get them for less. Use TFNN's Tiger Dollars and you'll get up to a 20% bonus on your purchase. And once you apply them to your account, Tiger Dollars are automatically used for all future or recurring charges. Tiger Dollars also never expire, are fully transferable, and are a great way to add savings to your newsletters or services. Become the investor you were born to be at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading,